Donald Trump was and is a child of New York. Born and raised in the borough of Queens to a life of hard-earned privilege. He was the fourth of five children born to a Scottish immigrant mother, Mary, and a housing developer father, Fred, who left an important mark on his son. My father was great. Good salesman. Good builder. He loved to build houses. He was a good builder. I learned so much from him. And he was a great guy, a lovely guy. I loved my father. Fred Trump, a shrewd and political businessman, made a fortune building low-income housing in Brooklyn and Queens, beginning in the late 1920s. The children were all raised to be high achievers, but Donald, in particular, patterned himself after his father. You look for unused nails, because why would you waste a nail? Who was a very tough and demanding guy, said to a... But that same pressure didn't sit well with Trump's oldest brother, Freddie. Here's author Timothy O'Brien. Fred Jr. really couldn't stand the pressure. Died of alcoholism. Trump cites Freddie's experience as why he doesn't drink. I probably wouldn't be here talking to you today if, if we didn't, if I didn't have my brother Fred, because he kept me off alcohol. And maybe with my kind of a personality, I'd be a serious alcoholic. I just don't know. But I never had a glass of alcohol in my life. Biographer Michael D'Antonio says young Donald's thirst for attention often landed him in trouble at school. He said to me that he was a wise guy. He's a terror. It proved even too much for Fred Trump to handle. So at age 13, Donald's parents shipped him upstate to the New York Military Academy. Many kids, of course, are desperately homesick, can't wait to go home. He apparently loved military school. He liked the, the kind of out front, I think, competitiveness of it. There were so many different ways that you could... Trump thrived, rising in rank, and he was socially popular with men and women. He also gravitated towards sports, or rather, winning in sports, in soccer, wrestling, football, and baseball. He excelled at baseball to the point where I think his coaches felt that he could uh, become a professional baseball player. I think military school Trump is that his wealth sort of created a bubble around him, and he's been able to pursue his appetites and really do whatever he wanted to do. While commuting to Fordham University in the Bronx. Two years later, he transferred to the University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School of Finance and Commerce. As soon as he could, he'd jump in his car and go back to Queens where he worked with his dad. He became. Trump graduated from Penn in 1968 to begin what quickly became a celebrity real estate career. Fresh out of business school, was already drawn to Manhattan's flashiest lights, those on the Great White Way. He was always intrigued with was the production of a Broadway play. That's author Michael D'Antonio. The play, which Trump backed to 1970, was Paris is Out. But the theatrical venture closed almost as quickly as it opened. So Trump retreated to his roots. When he eventually turned toward the family business in real estate in the early 19... To Donald Trump, the builder, cushioned against risk by his father's wealth and political connections, yet still longing for a piece of Manhattan glamour. Writer Gwenda Blair. People who dealt with him in those early days said he just jumped through the phone. He was so competitive, so ambitious, so eager. It was the old Commodore Hotel, a crumbling eyesore in the heart of the city that sat abandoned next to Grand Central Station. Author Timothy Chain, the Grand Hyatt was really Donald Trump coming onto the scene in New York and Donald Trump first coming into the public eye. This was shiny glass, lots of brass, stuck out in the middle of Manhattan. And this began his whole career of exaggeration. Before the project was even completed, the New York Times was already branding Trump New York's number one real estate promoter, describing him in one profile as tall, lean, and blonde, and resembling Robert Redford. He rapidly climbed New York's social ladder, becoming a regular in its most exclusive clubs, hobnobbing with movie stars and models like Ivana Zelnikova who he married in 1977. This was his ambition to find just the right beautiful young woman who would fill out the picture of the successful man on the rock. Parameters for her marriage to Donald and her partnership with him. 
But controversy followed Trump wherever he went, including public outcry over what was to become his signature property, Fifth Avenue's Trump Tower. The old building facade had historic limestone friezes that the Metropolitan Museum of Art wanted to preserve. But that would have added time to the project. Who sledgehammered the friezes into dust and took them down. So embedded in this triumph that is Trump Tower is also this early warning. For coffers with loans, he went on a shopping spree. He used this gigantic free piggy bank, essentially, to buy an airline, the Trump shuttle, to buy a hotel, the Plaza Hotel, to buy a football team, the USFL Generals. And then when he goes into Atlantic City, he ultimately acquires a whole string of casinos there using borrowed money as well. Those casinos and many of his other businesses closed one by one, often amid bankruptcy claims and unpaid debt. In 1989, Trump played a controversial role in one of the decade's most notorious crime cases, when five black teenagers were accused of attacking a white female jogger in Central Park. Trump stirred what quickly became a boiling pot over criminal justice and race, weighing in on the pages of the New York Daily News. The case of the Central Park jogger, he took out a... None of this slowed Trump's rise. In fact, the New York tabloids thrived on his exploits, breathlessly tracking his marriages to Ivana and Marla Maples, his divorces from both, and now his third and current marriage to Melania Trump. Then in 2004... You're fired. The Trump brand found its ideal niche in a wildly popular primetime program that celebrated everything he had come to represent. I'm looking for The Apprentice. Wealth, celebrity, business success, and toughness. He began The Apprentice, and that turned out in living rooms every week, being the boss, being the guy in charge, being the guy who hires people and fires people, when he first started that, was he thinking, aha, straight off to the White House? We can't say, but certainly 10 years in, that whole decade of people seeing him as the boss, as the CEO, has certainly made Thank the idea you, of his you. moving Thank into you. the Oval Office Thank seem you. a matter of course. From the corner office to the Oval Office suddenly didn't seem that far a leap. In retrospect, this scene seemed inevitable. Donald Trump, surrounded by the trappings of wealth and celebrity, staking his claim to the world's most powerful office. I am officially running for President of the United States, and we are going to make our country great again. His candidacy was initially dismissed as a prank, a long shot. But in fact, it was 28 years in the making. Gwenda Blair is a Trump biography. Intersection of politics and business was fueled by his developer father, Fred, but also by a shadier figure, Roy Cohn, the tough-talking power attorney who rose to prominence as Senator Joseph McCarthy's fixer during the communist scare. Running for president, or at least talking about the possibility, became something of a hobby for Trump. Donald Trump, the political operator, is very much the same person as Donald Trump, the marketer and self-promoter. And he's brought those same... Indeed, his first foray into presidential politics was a sales pitch, literally, to promote his new book. Here's writer Michael D'Antonio. In 19... He went to New Hampshire, gave a couple speeches. He made some pronouncements about the Reagan administration's failures and got a lot of attention. He was one of the first people... Trump played coy about his political ambitions be eyeing the White House and even about his political leanings. Are you a Republican, Donald? I'm a Republican, yes. So if there were politics, it would be as a Republican? It would be, I guess, as a Republican, but I don't see that there will be pro right. politics. He flirted with a Reform Party bid in 2000, floating Oprah Winfrey as a possible VP pick. You Oprah, always... I love Oprah. Oprah would always be my first choice. Oprah. Uh, Oprah, your competitor, right? And he made noise again in 2004. Well, you'd be shocked if I said that in many cases I probably identify more as a Democrat. The hints came again in 2008 and 2012. He's found these different flashpoints that he's used to get himself attention, but he's never, ever developed a mature, deeply informed political platform. 
During that time, critics charged, some of his positions had been as inconsistent as his party affiliation on issues Trump like abortion. abortion. Well, look, I'm, I'm very pro-choice. And I am very, very proud to say that I am pro-life. His view has also clearly shifted on the woman who is now his likely general election opponent. Hillary Clinton, I think, is a terrific woman. I mean, I'm a little biased because I've known her for years. Most people know she's a world-class liar. By 2011, he was questioning President Barack Obama's citizenship, promoting the already discredited notion that the president was not qualified to serve. People have birth certificates. He doesn't have a birth certificate. Now, he may have one, but there's something on that person, maybe religion, maybe it says he's a Muslim. It's a black president. How deep it was, and he immediately got a very, very strong feedback that it was quite deep, quite widespread. He got a lot of attention for that. And brings us back to this moment. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico. Pay Lasting through a field of 16 other primary contenders, Donald Trump has now emerged as the GOP nominee. Lo and behold, by the time he's... So I think what we've seen is sort of the confluence of the Donald Trump celebrity strategy, the Donald Trump self-promotion strategy, and a changing political environment that allowed him to leverage both of these things to become the presumptive nominee. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.